Hey, Jonathan. Hey, Keith. Man, I see the Canadian map again. What's going on? Yeah, so we're revisiting an earlier video where we had talked about how we can use relationships, uh, a one equals one relationship to fill in for missing data on a map. And 2021.4, which was announced at the Tableau conference uh, last week, it's in beta right now, has a feature where we don't even need to do that relationship anymore. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I wanted to demo that feature and um, also dive into a kind of extension of use cases that are enabled by it. Okay, so that thing that we solved with the relationships in the past, now we don't even have to do that. Correct. Okay. Yep. So, so just want to do a little refresher here and move through it. So here's the original map, and this is um, a couple of years worth of high school completion data from Canada. And um, on our map, we had 2018 data, and then when I click on 2019, we lose the whole northern tier of provinces. Wow, wow. Yep. So sparse data, don't have data here. And wouldn't it be great if we could show a, um, a map that says when we filter just for 2019, and here I've gone to the map we built, we have a background layer that is it, we're able to see this no reported data. Yeah. And we had done that with a one equals one relationship to create a, a largely independent set of data, but it was still within the same data source so we could plot it on the same map. And then this just never, um, or here's the the province list data, um, it just never goes away. Right. Uh, and we built this with dual axes. And one of the questions we gotten was, can we do this with layers? And the answer of course is yes. So here's this one equals one relationship data. Here's that monastic source of my province list. And I'm just gonna add this to layers and drop this off of country, off of color. So I just have gray marks here. Make them the filled map marks. And I can just drag and drop my layers because it's Tableau. And now I have my that completion data in the front and then that background data in the back of the layer. To put the padded out, um monastic data in the background. Um, and so this is this is doing the same thing we did before, but instead of a dual axis, it's in it's in using map layers. Correct. Okay. Yep. So we just see the one latitude and longitude on columns and rows in our layers version, two marks cards, back in our dual axes, we have two axes and the two marks cards. Also two marks cards. Yep. So, so this is all stuff we could do with within layers, anything from 2020.4 onwards. And here we are a year later, 2021.4 is in beta and has this new feature, map layers from multiple data sources. Um, so to go to that map here, in 2021.4, I'm working with my original high school completion data that is sparse. So when I click on 2019, I lose those provinces. And now I can, having connected to that list of provinces, I can select those provinces, or the province in the country here, and it looks like I'm gonna get a data blend. And if I drop this, over here or unfiltered or something, I would get a data blend. But instead I'm gonna drop this on the add a marks layer. And when I do that and let go, I get a new marks layer. Mm, so it's not blending. It, it looked like you were gonna blend because the linking field was there, but it depends on where you dropped it. You dropped it into its own layer and now this is not data blending and it's not a secondary data source. Exactly. And with that, I can still do the, okay, let's do it as a filled map. Let's rearrange my list here. Now you're doing everything you, you, you did before, right? Yeah, but I did not have to set up that one equals one relationship 
to make that happen. I just have two. This Mark's card is coming from my list of provinces. Um, and this tableau got a little confused here. This is Mark's card is my high school completion data. And this Mark's card is coming from my list of provinces. So we have different little blue check marks depending on which layer we're looking at. Mm -hmm. And nary a data blend and also not even a relationship, right? Like you didn't have to go to the trouble to, to put the two things together into a single data source, even mm -hmm. with the one equals one relationship. Um, mm -hmm. And that's super handy, right? Because you don't always want to have to put things together into one data source if they don't really mm -hmm. belong together. Or, yep. um, uh, you know, there could be reasons why you can't put them together into a single data source. Like, so for example, we, you know, have a huge organization and sometimes it's a completely different team that mm -hmm. is responsible for curating the data that I'm using and they publish it as a published data mm -hmm. source on the Tableau server. Um, and at the moment, I can't use a published data source from the Tableau server in a relationship. So I'm just like physically blocked mm -hmm. from creating that one yep. equals one relationship. Um, mm -hmm. Or it could also be the case that I want to dump this stuff out at the end of a prep workflow or at the end of an Alteryx workflow. Um, and at the moment, neither of those two data preparation tools can produce a, a multi-logical table data source with relationships in it. Um, you would need to mm -hmm. get more sophisticated and use some hyper API mm -hmm. stuff in order to do that. So, so there can be reasons why creating the one equals one relationship is not so convenient. And now mm -hmm. what you've just shown is we don't have to do that if we don't want to. We could just connect to the two data sources separately. Yep. S stick the stick each data mm -hmm. source in its own layer and, and we're off to the races. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so way I I think about this, because we talked about joins and relationships and and blends is kind of things we don't have to do in this case. So there's a way I think of this in the way we're connecting this data is it's a visual connection um and the the kind of the way we're connecting to it it happens to be that all of the things that we're plotting are ending up on a map so so the the combining of the multiple data sources you're saying is really only happening at at the viz render layer of all of the things that tableau does um we're not doing a data blend which is like a post aggregate join or a join, which is a record level join, or a relationship, which is, which is a more flexible post aggregate. All of that stuff is actually like depending upon the, the two data sources having some sort of dimension in common, or mm -hmm. the way that we hacked the relationships is to have one equals one. But but all of those things are trying to relate the records to one another in some form or fashion. Mm -hmm. And here, yep. You're just putting one data source on a map and a different data source on a map, and they don't have to have anything in common with each other. The only thing, mm -hmm. the only way they relate to one another is that is that they're both on a map. Yep. Exactly. So this is um, a really great feature um, for everybody who wants to do stuff with maps. And we can just start getting things there right away. And I know for me, um, there's a certain amount of my use of tools like QGIS that I won't have to do now because I can just throw th throw different shape files on a map. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, so so that's a so we just talked about this new feature and it's a great feature. Now I want to dive a little deeper into this one particular use case that it enables. Okay. Um, so I want to go back a second to our previous view using the one equals one relationship. And um, I have changed um, my filter here and I'm gonna filter out 2019. And when I do that, um, Tableau's gonna throw a little bug here because this is the beta. Um, and I'm just gonna refresh my view so we get what happens. I've filtered out all of my data and therefore I'm not seeing anything in my view. You filtered down down to nothing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So a way I kind of I've shorthanded this for myself is filters affect the entire view in in Tableau. Mm -hmm. Um so even though we have this one equals one relationship that's created more independence, so I can show my sparse data. Um 
my sparse data and still show something underneath, as soon as I remove all the data, filter everything out, the view goes away. Yeah. And that and that's happening because you're on the on the one equals one relationship data source. And even though that fully padded logical table is meant to be there in the background, you filtered the, the, the transient data, the high school completion data down so that it's nothing, uh, but that's affecting the entire relationship data source and the whole canvas went empty. Yep. Yeah. And and this is one of those things when it we can have views where we've got like multiple user filters and parameter settings that are all there and that the user can end up in conditions where there's nothing displayed. And and then we want to let the user know that, hey, you filtered stuff out. Hey, you, you filtered down to nothing, right? Yeah. And, and there's, man, mm -hmm. all kinds of like blog posts out there about how to hack around that, you know, like maybe putting mm -hmm. something in a transparent layer in the background or like sheet swapping, all these things that people would do mm -hmm. in order to be able to say, hey, you filtered down to nothing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so with this feature, we can actually start doing something about that. Okay. <laughs> so I want to demonstrate how 2021.4 is different. Right. So here I've gone back and I've built out my two layers from separate data sources. So here's my monastic data from my provinces. Here's the high school completion data, two different data sets. Um, and then when I filter out my 2019 data for my completion data, I still have my original province data here. Oh, yeah. So, so, so the, these. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just jumping the gun. The, mm -hmm. the two data sources have yeah, been go for it. disjointed, right? Like. You filtered the mm -hmm. one down to nothing, but the other one didn't disappear. Oh, so the filters on are when we have map layers from multiple data sources, those filters are completely 100% independent of one each other, of one another. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking like a four wheel drive on a car. People who know cars would know better where, where like you've got mm -hmm. this um, drivetrain that can, that can traction on the two data sources completely separately and they're, and they're not, mm -hmm. they're no longer tied to one another. Uh, so this is new in Tableau. Never had this before with relationships or blends or or joins. Um, so a new way of thinking about it. And we can use that to solve this filtering problem that's happening here. So, so I'm starting with a view where I have the... Um, in this view, we've got three layers going on. And so just go top to bottom on this. So the top layer, we're using our one equals one relationship source to show our transient data. Okay. That is sparse and is gonna go away. And then we wanna fill that in with, okay, hey, there's no data for a certain year or, or no data for your filter selections. Um, and so we're using that one equals one relationship and the, um, our, our monastic data source for that, um, to do that fill in. Um, so that's taking care of the use case of we're looking at the 2018 data. We see everything. Then we're looking at just 2019 data. We can see our no reported data. And then there's that third situation where, with the filter and parameter settings, the user can filter everything out. And so in that case, we have a third layer, which is drawing a text mark. So when I remove that 2019 data, voila. Boom. Hey, you filtered everything out. And this is all in one worksheet. Oh, I see. So you're just satisfying all of the little edge cases. Um, with a data source for each scenario. Yep. So this third layer is coming from our straight up list of provinces and in a whole separate data source from our top two layers. Okay, so the, the top two layers are doing what we did in the past, right? In the yep. previous episode where you could do it with a dual axis or you could do it with map mm -hmm. layers where you've got the, the okay. transient data in, in one marks card and then the one equals one relationship mm -hmm. in a second marks card. 
And that one equals one relationship thing is there um, in order to in order to show all of the gray marks for this for the provinces that haven't been reported yet. Correct. And that's what we did in the past. And now you've added beneath that a third layer, which is just the provinces data standalone. Mm hmm. OK. Yep. And that and thing. The third layer. That thing is, is just there just as a catch all. Mm -hmm. Got it. In case you in case you filter everything out, and so and so, look at that. It's still it's a it's a text mark type, but it's still mm -hmm. got country on the detail and latitude and longitude. So it's still a map, right? Yep. Like even though it's got this big this big funny sentence that says, "Hey, dummy!" Like mm -hmm. add some filter, add some data to the view. Um, it's still a map, and that's in it. And so it's in it's it's in a map layer, um, mm -hmm. but it's just there as a catch all in case the other two uh, have gone completely empty. Totally. And just to, to kind of show this, the one bit I had to do to make this kind of obvious, um, so I'm just going to rearrange my label here a little bit. Okay. And I'll turn the 2019 back on. Whoops, I zoomed into the map. Um, so here, <laughs> that label is now showing up in Hudson uh, Bay. Okay. So I had to I be see. a little careful in my positioning to make sure it was invisible Right. Until the point where I wanted it to be visible. Yeah, you kind of got to hide your catch-all sentence behind the data that it's supposed to show is missing. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it'll sp spill out into the bay. Okay. Yep. Clever. Yeah. And so this is um, something I'm going to be using in different views. And there's the the cases where um, we're using it we're using map layers to not draw maps, but other things. Mm -hmm. um, and this could be used in that situation as well. So it's a, a handy little feature and demonstration of the, the flexibility of what we can do with map layers from multiple data sources. Right, totally. Mm -hmm. Like I've been fantasizing about having, why do I only have two axes? Why can't I have as many layers as I want to on a scatter plot or on a bar mm -hmm. chart? Um, and actually, just a couple of weeks ago, you and uh, Alexander Mao did the Cleveland Tug, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so we'll link to that. And Alex's entire uh, presentation there was was using these map layer features to to build really sweet little sunburst charts. Um, mm -hmm. And he can do bars and lines uh, all in mm -hmm. multiple layers, um, yep. uh, kind of tricking Tableau as if it were a map, but it's not. Um, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of cool yep. stuff there. Okay, well, thanks for yeah. this. Yeah, for showing mm -hmm. um, how you've done. And, and just to recap it again, you've got a sandwich where the one equals one is in the middle, and then it's surrounded by the two independent data sources um, on either side. Yep. Yeah. All right. And we'll have the Tableau Public Workbook and everything available as well. Right, totally. This is pretty confusing. So if people want to, they can they can pull it down and pick it apart. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. See ya. All right. Bye.